I'm Morris Tippin, and we welcome you to the Medora Covered Bridge. The Medora Covered Bridge is the longest historic covered bridge in the United States, and uh, uh, we uh, have some interesting things about the bridge that seem to be interesting to people. Uh, I welcome your questions. Just don't ask me how far it is down to the river and how deep the water is, because I don't know that. But uh, the uh, uh, one of the most common questions we get is how did they get the curve in the arches? And each arch is in six sections, and each section is a single tree. And what they would do is uh, lay the uh, slab down on uh, saw horses and then make their mark top and bottom. Then they would saw down to their mark, probably with a cross cut or a buck saw, and then they would uh, uh, chip that block out and finish it off with a shaping tool called a foot adz. Uh, the carpenter who did the rehab replaced a couple of sections on the far end and he did the same thing. He just used a chainsaw. And I asked him how come he didn't use an adz and he said if they'd had chainsaws back then they'd have used them too. They, uh, the, uh, there's a 96 year old gentleman uh, here in town who passed away a couple of years ago. His, his name was John Hill. And uh, John told me that he remembered there being wooden railing down the middle of the bridge. And he remembered the horses and buggies and the early cars that it was two-way traffic separated by that railing. And then in the late 20s or early 30s, he said they replaced the flooring, but they didn't put the railing back down and he thought it was because the cars were getting too wide. And from then on, it was uh, uh, one-way traffic. I uh, thought it was just fascinating, you know, thinking about the horses and buggies and the, and the cars, just picturing that. And uh, he did a good job <laughs> painting that picture. There is a, uh, a peg on each of the three arches on the north side. And that has uh, threads on top of it, and we think that was, uh, well, I thought it was for telegraph wires, but you get a good story going, they mess you up with facts every time. And uh, uh, they, there was an executive here from Frontier Telephone, he and his wife, they were just uh, visiting, but he said that was probably for telephone wires. And on the far end, as you go out on the uh, east side, uh, as you go out on the left, there is it's a booster or a repeater for the telephone. It's no longer active, but that's probably what those uh, were for, was telephone wires. And uh, there is a gap, uh, I mean, hand-hewn, they're called cords, at the top and the bottom. They're hand-hewn, and I couldn't figure out why they would and hew that when they saw the rest of it. And the carpenter uh, told me that, the, who did the rehab, told me that uh, as far as he knew, the reason they did that is they wanted them as long as they could get them without a break. So they're like 40 feet long. And you can't saw into a tree and saw it more than 16 to 20 feet and keep, the, uh, keep it straight because of the pressure in the tree. Uh, at that time, they, that hand hewing would be the only way they had to do that. I think uh, and nowadays they have other ways of doing that, but the sawmill people tell me that that's true, that uh, there's so much pressure in the tree that it, uh, you can't keep it straight if you go any longer than that. And uh, the, uh, we say old bones, new skin. The outside has been replaced, but the structure, the truss, which is uh, what holds the bridge together and the important part of the uh, bridge is uh, still in place with a few repairs, but no alterations. You're on the pier right now and uh, there is a door, uh, on uh, two doors on the north side over the piers. And uh, the carpenter says those were probably for uh, uh, access to the piers for maintenance and uh, for inspection of the piers. The doors were missing in the old siding. Uh, 
hinges are still there and they had the square nails in them. And that's how we tell what's original is by the square nails. And so the doors were probably original to the bridge. Between the cords and the, the carpenter says that that's for expansion and contraction. Now I did have a six-year-old girl who asked me, Mr. What happens to the roof? The, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any idea. Now, six-year-olds can ask pretty good questions, though, sometimes. It is how did they get the piers in the water. You can tell who knows what they're talking about when I ask if you know what a copper dam is. And uh, uh, a copper dam is just a structure they build out around it, then they uh, uh, suck the water out, and then they put the... Uh, uh, they're 9 by 12s and they put those across and then they built the pier on top of that. What's fascinating to me is that those uh, timbers are still there. Okay, the first seven boards as you come in from the west side are uh, uh, original boards and uh, we can tell what's original by the square nails. And they have the square nail holes and they did have the square nails in them. When they did the rehab, they were going to try to salvage as much of that as they could, but when they uh, started taking it off, they realized they weren't going to be able to do that. Uh, but uh, so we salvaged it and we're doing uh, we have an artist painting on those, Nick Walden painting on those, and we're using those as fundraisers. Uh, so that's been a good thing for us. But the, uh, uh, all the original board, according to the contract, the original lumber was oak and poplar, and uh, the siding was poplar, and the uh, structure was basically oak with some poplar, I'm told. Uh, poplar is more insect resistant and the oak is more sturdy. The first seven boards as you come in from the west side are uh, uh, original boards and uh, we can tell what's original by the square nails. And they have the square nail holes and they did have the square nails in them. When they did the rehab, they were going to try to salvage as much of that as they could, but when they uh, started taking it off, they realized they weren't going to be able to do that. Uh, but uh, so we salvaged it and we're doing, uh, we have an artist painting on those, Nick Walden painting on those, and we're using those as fundraisers. Uh, so that's been a good thing for us. But the, uh, uh, all the original board according to the contract, the original lumber was oak and poplar and uh, the siding was poplar and the uh, structure was basically oak with some poplar, I'm told. Uh, poplar is more insect resistant and the oak is more sturdy. I'm not a wood person, but I, I listen to what people tell me. And